I'm so glad to be back with you again today because I have a real cool project. At least I think so. In fact, I think it's so cool, I'm wearing it. It's a triple layer necklace with a really cool vintage pendant, which you'll be able to see up close a little bit better over here. And then it's got a nice dangly tassel because you know me and my tassels, I love them. But I just think this tassel adds so much balance to something. But anyway, I enjoyed making this necklace and I'd like to show you how I did it. So come on over here and I'll show you how I did it. <laughs> okay, so this is the necklace. And I have really been having a great time making these triple layer necklaces. They're so easy, so, so easy. Most of the techniques you use, and actually all of the techniques in here that you would use are things that we've done so many times and you've done with seen on many other videos it's, it's not uh, not tough <laughs> you know so that's a nice thing and once I give you all the measurements to do it it's going to be even less tough it will be even better because then you'll just go measure your chain and get it laid out and you'll just hook it right up and that'll be that and that's what I'm going to do today <clears throat> normally I'll make one and then I'll get everything all cut and set aside. Then I'll go ahead and make it right on the camera. That will probably take us a little too long. So I'm going to teach you by measurements. Okay. I think it'll work good. You can let me know. If it doesn't work, next time we'll do it another way. But I think this is going to work just fine. So anyway, you can see I have three layers down here. This is mixed metals. So I did brass ox up here. I did shiny silver here, and then I did this diamond cut uh, imitation rhodium chain down here, which is this chain that we sell at the site all the time. You can see it. We've been selling this for years. Everyone loves it. We have it in like so many colors. Anyway, that's this chain. And also up here around the neck. So you need measurements for this. You need measurement for this, one for here, and then your sides up here. And then of course you wanna adjust it in case you want it longer or shorter. Okay, then you've got the pendant. I'll show you the uh, measurements for that. This is so, so simple. You're not gonna believe it. And then I have my little pendant. I don't know if you guys have seen this on my website before, but this is so precious. I'm gonna ask Javi if she can kind of zoom in for you so you can really, really, really see it. Uh, this way. Okay. All right, I want it to be like upright. Yeah, I had it sideways so you can see that's good. All right, it's on the brass ox finish, which is like antique brass. It's a little dark. So, but on this, I lifted up my hand a little bit too. There are two darling little squirrels on a tree branch, and they've got nuts or something that they're going to put maybe in the hole of the tree, you know, to save them. You know how squirrels do, they save their stuff. And then there's a cute, cute, tiny little bird. And this is copied from an old, old children's books. Um, probably, oh, maybe from the 30s or so. From the style of it, that's what I would say, 20s, 30s. I don't know which one, but, you know, in that period. And it's just so precious. When you hold it in your hand, you just won't believe the detail in it. And, you know, squirrels are kind of hot right now. <laughs> People are loving on those squirrels, so that's kind of a nice motif. What I would do to this one, and I may do it when I go back upstairs, I might add a little bit of gold pen on their tails at the top of their head to shade them, maybe around their toes or something to shade it, just to kind of bring it up a little bit, a little bit on this bird, his little wing, and then his little breast there at the top of his head, just a dot maybe. And then I might get bold and put a little bit of blue in here somehow, though I don't know if blue's gonna look right with this. I guess I could make the bird blue. But I'm gonna add a little color to it and that will make a pot more. But I'm just absolutely nuts and in love with this. So what it is, is a triple layered pendant. I'm gonna show you this first before we start measuring, okay? So I used well, the bottom piece isn't down here for some reason. I'll just show you on the pendant. Okay. 
the bottom piece is a base like this. Hopefully you can see it. I had one to bring down it's here. It's probably under the mat. You think it's under the mat? On the other side. Yeah. I've seen it. Oh, she knew where it was. Now I don't have to try and describe it with nothing. <laughs> okay, here we go. It's like this. You can see it's right on here. And it's really cool because it's got a nice beveled edge. It's got two hanging loops. So for me, this just says pendant, pendant, pendant all the way, you know. So I was thinking, how could I make a nice pendant out of this with a nice motif in the middle or whatever and then hang stuff from it, use it for one of my necklaces. So I took this bamboo bezel is 30 millimeter a 30 millimeter bezel is what you want okay and I clipped this little hanging hole off with just my you know nippers and since it's brass underneath you really don't have to colorize it anything it will be fine and then I glued it on here because I really don't need it in fact you know what I'm just going to go ahead and take it off so you can see better let's just take it and take it off normally what I'll do is I'll just get it by the little end of it and I just kind of wiggle it off. All right. Yeah. And if you feel over that, it feels a little rough, you can just take a file to it a little bit. Or some of your steel wool, you know, like we've talked about before. So then I take and I glue this onto that. And then you can see here it's glued on. And then. I set my squirrels down into it. Now, the squirrels are not quite big enough. I'll just take this away for now. The squirrels are not quite big enough, so what I did is I put a little bead of glue around there, the edge, and then I took some of this stainless steel ball chain, and then I accented it in there. So I had my mixed metals, you see. And I thought, you know, that would bring it up and pull it together a little bit more. So you can see kind of, you know, how I did it. Just go carefully and you'll have it. It's not going to be, it's not a hard and messy job. That's what I want you to know. So that's how I made that. But you could also use this piece to do a lot of different things too. Like for example, I love this pie crust mount. We have had this like forever. This is 30 millimeter. So that could go in there. Just let the tabs out a little bit so you can hang it. You could do a resin. In there you could do epoxy sculpt in there or if you wanted you could put the little squirrels down in there and then decorate the edge and have a little depth to it if that's what you like there's I mean so many ways you could go with it that's why the bases and bezels and blanks are just if you haven't discovered brass be bezels and bases and blanks and stuff like that you need to because they're more than what you see you get to playing around and you'll see there's just so much you can do with them and we have a lot of them at the website, musicboutiques.com. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside because I showed you how to do that now. So this is measurements. This is all measurements. Let's get you your measurements on this, okay? So whatever chain that you want to use is fine. You know, I'm not going to tell you you have to use this chain or that you don't, okay? So on this, I'm just going to kind of get a measurement on this bead link chain or whatever chain you want to do. Okay, it appears that I used about 12 inches of chain back here, six, each, six inches on both sides, okay? Then I connected with, it looks like a 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter braided um, jump, which we have on the side most of the time. And then here's another one. Just did like three beads in a row, put the little caps on, which are very, very cool caps. I'll talk to you about that in a little bit. And then I put the, the other one on. This one doesn't match, so you can tell I was working on this late. I'll have to get that and make it match. Um, Cause that can throw it can, that can throw your fit and how it hangs off, just a little thing like that. But anyway, I like the big ones there. You don't have to use them. You can use a little one. I just like them. Okay, so six inches on each side, twelve inches total, and then this measures about an inch and a quarter. So three beads. On an eye pin, long eye pin, would be good. Okay. All right. So then, to get the measurements on this, on the brass ox piece in the middle, and you don't have to use brass ox if you don't like mixed metals. And by all means, don't do them. You know, you could even use some beaded chain, hand beaded or commercially done. Um, you could use a repurposed piece of some kind, an old 
a piece of an old rhinestone necklace or something if you wanted anything you wanted but this time because I was working kind of late at night trying to figure things out I ended up just using the easy peasy brown socks chain and I have I'm going to say around six inches. So you need about six inches of brass ox chain. Now, later on, I'll go back and I'll write all these measurements into the description of this video as well so that you'll have them for reference. Okay, so six inches on that top layer. Then on this next one, I have this really pretty uh, kind of diamond cut silvery chain. Let me pull this out to see. It looks like it's just a hair over six inches. I would say, no. Well, Let's just be sure. Uh, six and a quarter, something like that. So six, six and a quarter, and you do have to graduate them or they'll all hang in the same place and you'll get no effect from it. But I wanted this to hang high enough up that I could put my little tiny pendant on it. And so I did split the chain, although it's six inches, six and a quarter, you know, all together. Let's, let's measure this and just see. I, I split it and then I put the jump ring and then the little pendant in there. Yeah, it's about, yeah, I would see six and a quarter, maybe. But it's like three and an eighth on each head, on each side. Don't worry, all the measurements are gonna be in the description. So just scroll down after the video, everything will be there. You can make note of them or you can just come back to this video if you decide to make one and you know work with me. Then I put a little bead, one of those Japanese Millifiori's, a little bead on here with one of my screw top um, caps, which I love, love, love them. And I'll show you those in another minute. Now we gotta measure this piece, this, this other piece. Not this top one, we did that already. But this one I cut as well. So let's measure each side. Okay. So it appears I use about five inches on each side. So that'd be 10 inches. So all together, if you purchased two feet of chain or you found two feet of chain from your own stash, you'd be covered on this. Because it looks like it's around 22 inches, but just to be safe, I always go a little bit more because I just, you know, be safe. So I would say if you had two feet of this chain, you'd have enough to do the back part and the front part, okay? I like a sparkly chain. So I've got the brass ox, I've got the silver figaro here, which I think we have this on the website too. We have several figaro chains on the website that are really beautiful. And then we have this, I have the back part. So what I've done here to attach it is I took a piece of our brass ox book chain, which if you're familiar with it, it's the best chain ever. I do happen to have it right now and I don't always. But what I like about it is you never have to lose a link. Every link is useful. You can use it as a bale. You can use it to make earrings, all kinds of stuff. So if you have a little bit extra left over from a bracelet or a necklace, don't, you know, don't just get rid of it or give it away or something. Keep that. You may end up using that little piece of chain over and over again to do all kinds of things. And that's exactly what I did here. I like it because it's embossed. I don't know, Javi, if you can bring that up a little bit. Can you see how it's got a pattern to it? Yeah, it's embossed. It has a pattern to it. It's very, very vintage Victorian, although it's a reproduction chain. But it definitely... Um, works really well with this and all you do is just take the link off and thread it through here and then shut it you know right here's the closure but shut it a little bit better but it's shut and the rest of it's just a few jump rings and blah 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 easy i'm going to show you now how i did the chain you probably all can, already can tell but let me hold it up so i can find the long pieces versus the short pieces Okay, the longest piece is this piece of brass ox chain. And this is bead and link chain as well, which we also sell in brass ox. We have it right now in silver, brass ox, and gold. So this is brass ox to go with this brass ox and the other brass ox chain. So it can carry through. And it is about two inches long, give or take. If you want it longer, go ahead and make it longer. You can 
Then the second one, I used the Figaro chain, and it is, it's also about two inches, looks like. I don't know if that can be right, because I wanted it shorter, and it does hang shorter. So I don't know. Let's see. Maybe I measured wrong. Yeah, it's shorter. It's um, maybe about an inch and three quarters, but that's just enough to graduate it. And then the one on the outer is just a little over an inch. Just a hair over an inch. Inch and a quarter, maybe. So you can really go through your chain scraps, maybe, and find what could work for this. And you just pick what, you know, interests you. You don't have to use, you know, all the same chain. You can do whatever you want. But anyway, that's the same on the other side. Same measurement, I just say about an inch and a quarter for this about inch and three quarters for this one and then this was two inches and then you can see I just you know put some beads on it now on this middle one let me separate that out I put one I put one on the bottom but I also put one going up the middle because that filled out the tassel okay and then I took and I put one at the top too Let's see if I can show you yeah I just linked it to the top link so I've got like three going down. On each of the others, I have just one. You can work that out however you want. If you want it really full, you can, you know, hook little beads all up the edges of the other ones too. Or you can put more on this one in the middle. However you want to do it is fine. And then at the end, all I do it, did was I took my pieces and I put them on a big jump ring, about 10, 10 millimeter probably. Yeah, probably 10 millimeter. And just threaded them on in the order I wanted to do so. What I would do is I would put, I would put the shortest one on first, then the next longest one on, then the one that goes in the middle, then the next longest on the other side, and then the shortest one on the end here. Here it is. And I'm done. And then I pick it up to see how it's going to fall. And it does drape very nicely. Let me get back in the show. It, it drapes very, very nicely. And then on the ends, I use ball end head pins, which we do have at the website. I think silver and brass socks. Might have some black too, but I'm not sure. Um, and oh, on these little, I want to show you these. These are just, so I don't know of anybody else that even has these. They probably do, but I haven't seen it. I just kind of found them on a fluke, and I've been in love with them for years. These little screw top, uh, they're out of the picture here. Little screw top caps. Those are more straight up and down. These flare out a little bit. But I get them plated with the rest of my brass so it matches our other lines. But I get them in all bunches of sizes. And what I love about them is this little screw part when you put your bead up in there and stuff, and then you take and you're wrapping your wire around, this just makes it look like it's wrapped already. You really wouldn't even have to wrap it. You could just make a loop and leave it go. It will look like, it will look like it's looped and wrapped. So that's kind of cool. So we have them at the website. In the bead cap section, you'll find them. So basically, guys, we've walked through the whole thing. This is what you do. This is how we do it. Anyway, I hope you could hear me. I feel like I'm a little bit trailing off today. But anyhow... That's how you do it, and it's basically, you know, take the measurements and work with them. You can use whatever chain that you happen to have. You know, these bases are, you know, a good thing to have around. If you don't have some already, you might want to pop on over to our place and get some. The squirrels are at our place. We have a lot of these beads, a lot of beads, a lot of, a lot of Saturns, bicones, um, flower beads, melon beads, checky beads, um, Japanese Tombow, all that. We have a lot of beads now at Beast Boutique. So you might want to come over and have a little look. Also, if I didn't mention it, I did my gluing with E6000. Just some people want to know. So all you need is basic uh, tools to do it. You just need, um, I use flat nose and round nose. I have this, I don't have my round nose down here. I use my flat nose more. And then I did my cutters. And I like my jumpy tool for turning, which we have a video on that if you like. And that's pretty much how it goes. So I hope you will try it because it really looks good on. I'm just going to make a few adjustments on mine. And I'm going to keep it. 
<laughs> so I hope you'll try it and I hope you'll come back next time to see what I've got up my sleeve because I always have a new project in mind for you. So happy Friday and have a great day. Thank you.